Hello everyone. I am back yet again with another beautiful story by Sudha Murthy. The title of the story is Who is Great? The story tells us how often we all are quick to the judgments and declare a person as we perceive rather than stepping in their shoes to understand their side of the story. Here goes the story. Enjoy. Whenever I teach my class, I make sure that everyone participates in the question answer session. I normally teach for 40 minutes and the last 20 minutes I keep open for debates, questions and answers. This way students learn to express their opinion in front of others and the teachers also understand how much the students have learned. Many times I have learned a lot from my students during these sessions. Sometimes their questions are so difficult that I'm not even able to answer. Then I tell them that I'll refer to my books and answer the next day. Frequently after the class I tell a story which leads to debates. Once I made a statement. Many a times there is no perfect solution for a given problem. No solution is also a solution. Everything depends upon how you look at it. We make judgments on others depending upon what we think of them. My students immediately objected to the statement. Convince us, they said. Okay, I'll tell you a simple story. This happened many centuries back. There was a beautiful girl called Ratna Prabha who was rich and bright. She completed her studies and asked her teacher, What shall I pay you as Guru Dakshina? Her teacher replied, Your father has already paid me. You don't have to worry. Ratna Prabha insisted and the teacher was upset. He said to himself, I want to test the courage of this girl. Let me put a difficult condition which she will not be able to fulfill. Then she will not trouble me anymore. So he said, Ratna Prabha, on a moonless night, you should deck yourself with a lots of jewelries and come to my house all alone. There was a forest between Ratna Prabha's house and the teachers. The road was very bad. There were many animals in the forest and a river too. Ratna Prabha thought for a minute and went away. The teacher was very happy that he had silenced his student. Finally, it was a moonless night. Ratna Prabha decked herself with expensive jewelries and was about to set out to her teacher's house. Her father saw this and was very upset. He asked her where she was going. So Ratna Prabha narrated the story and her father was taken aback. He said, your teacher is a nice person. You must have troubled him, which is why he told you to do this. Just to teach you a lesson. I know him well. I'll explain to him tomorrow. Don't go. He'll understand and he'll pardon you. You are like a daughter to him. Ratna Prabha did not listen. She insisted on going all alone as she had promised she would. There were many animals in the forest, but she had made up her mind and kept walking. Suddenly, she was stopped by a young thief. He had never seen so many expensive ornaments and was delighted by the amount of money he would make that night. He stopped her and told her his intentions. Ratna Prabha was unperturbed. She said, I promised my teacher I would go to him wearing all these ornaments. I will give them to you when I come back from my teacher's house. I always keep my word. The thief was surprised and let her go. But he followed her secretly to know what happened next. Ratna Prabha knocked on the door of the teacher's house. He opened the door and was surprised and sad to see her. I thought you would take it as a joke. It was only to discourage you. I never thought you would come here against all the odds. Please go back home. I'll bless you, my child. You are a woman of your word. Ratna Prabha turned to go back when the thief appeared before her. She said to him, I promise to give you all my ornaments. 
please take them the thief smiled and said you are an unusual woman i don't want anything from you it is difficult to meet people like you ratnaprabha came home her father was waiting at the door steps she described everything to him her father was proud and happy he said you are courageous and you kept your word come inside and take rest you have traveled a lot today when i completed this story my students were not impressed they said what is great in this story there is a head strong girl a foolish teacher an impractical thief and an irresponsible father what do we have to learn from this story i told them this is how you view things i understand the story in a different way courageous ratnaprabha kind hearted teacher generous thief and a responsible father who values his daughter's words who do you think was the greatest person in the story a lot of noise broke out in the classroom the students started debating and arguing amongst themselves i was smiling and looking at them one group got up and said madam we think ratnaprabha was great because she was aware of all the difficulties and yet did not change her mind she was opposed by her father scared by the thief worried about the animals in the forest but still she believed that guru dakshina should be given to her teacher we only hope madam you will not ask such a guru dakshina from us the whole class burst into laughter i did not answer another group immediately got up and argued we don't agree there was nothing great about ratnaprabha she was a headstrong girl the thief was the greatest person because a thief usually robs people without asking their victims or worrying about what happened to them afterwards there is some bond between the teacher and ratnaprabha and between ratnaprabha and her father they had some commitment to each other whereas the thief was not a part of the system so we think the thief was the greatest personality or before they could complete another group got up and argued for the teacher the teacher was the greatest he told ratnaprabha not to worry about the fees but when she was adamant he put forth a difficult condition when she came he was surprised and worried he did not ask anything else he blessed her wholeheartedly the last group did not agree because they believed that the father was the greatest they argued the father allowed ratnaprabha to take her own decision how many fathers even today allow their daughters to do that madam in this class how many girls can take independent decisions things became too noisy after this because the debate had now become personal i realized it was the time for me to interfere i said there is no one person in the story who was great it is the way we look at it similarly whenever any problem arises we should view it from different angles the decisions each of us arrive at will be different whenever we blame somebody for a minute we should enter into that person's mind and try to understand why he did what he did only then we should take a decision now my entire class agreed with me thank you this was the story